This is the BMAT 2020 Section 2 paper. This is the paper I did in my exam and scored an 8.6 that got me into Cambridge. In this video, I'm going to take you guys through this paper and how I would go about getting full marks on the paper. But before we go through part one of this walkthrough, if you guys are sitting in the BMAT this year, check out sigmamed.co.uk. Me and my friend Hamza are Cambridge University students who scored in the top 10% of the BMAT and we've put together a course that teaches you guys everything you need to know about async section 1, 2 and 3 of the BMAT as well as the 2022 section 2 full walkthrough. This course costs just £30 for the first 50 students who buy it so make sure you're quick. But without further ado, here is part 1 of the BMAT 2020 section 2 full walkthrough. Okay, so welcome to part one of three of the SPMAT section two 2020 full walkthrough. So why don't we start off with question one. Which of the two of the following statements about genetic variation are correct? Statement number one, asexual reproduction always produces genetic variation. That's not true because sometimes asexual reproduction can produce clones. So one is not correct. 2. Gamete production is the only possible source of genetic variation in sexual reproduction. This is incorrect as gamete fusion can also lead to genetic variation. So therefore, just purely by elimination, only statements 3 and 4 are correct because the question says which two of the following statements about genetic variation are correct. And if we look at statements 3 and 4, they are in fact correct. The environment can cause genetic variation and mutations can produce genetic variation. Therefore, the correct answer option in this case is F. Question number two then. A sample of an element consists of two isotopes. The relative abundance of each isotope is shown in the table. What is the relative atomic mass of the element in this sample? Written over here, I have the mass of each isotope, which is calculated by adding together the proton plus neutron numbers since electrons have no mass. So if isotope 1 is 69, isotope 2 is 71. So therefore, the relative atomic mass of this element is going to be between 69 and 71, so we can get rid of the first four answer options. And between 69.8 and 70, since isotope 1, which is lighter, is slightly more abundant, it's going to be the answer option that's closer to 69. And in this case, that's going to be answer option E by process of elimination without actually having to bother with doing the calculation. Okay. Question number three then. A supermarket has a large open top deep freezer to keep products frozen but still visible to customers. Which statement about the air in this freezer explains why the products will remain frozen even though it is open topped? A. The temperature difference between the air inside and outside the freezer is too large for heat to enter the freezer. That's just not true. B. Temperature difference between the air inside and outside the freezer is too small for heat to enter the freezer. Again, not true. C. The warm air above the freezer is denser than the colder inside the freezer. That's wrong. Warm air is less dense. D. The cold air inside the freezer is denser than the hot air above the freezer. That's correct. So therefore, the correct answer option is D. Because basically, you have a layer of hot air and a layer of cold air. And this is where the food is. So the food stays cold. Okay, then question number four. Which one of the following is a simplification of this massive expression? So let's sort it out. 2 minus 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. So instantly between top and bottom, these are going to cancel out. So it becomes 2 minus 1 over 2x plus 1. And now we need to get it over a common denominator. So what we're going to do is 2 brackets 2x plus 1, subtract 1. So what we're going to have, therefore, is 4x plus 2 minus 1 over 2x plus 1, which is equal to 4x plus 1 over 2x plus 1, which in this case is answer option A, which is the correct answer. If you guys are sitting in the BMAT this year, make sure you guys check out sigmamed.co.uk. Me and my friend Hamza are Cambridge University students who scored in the top 10% of the entire country in the BMAT. We've put together this course to help students sitting in the BMAT. It was used by over 80 students last year, and some students have even described it as the course that made all the difference for them. 
It includes tutorials on how to write the perfect section 3 essay, how to tackle every question type in section 1, teaches you the content for section 2, and all of the exam techniques that we use to score such high scores. I scored an 8.6 in section 2. We've also added the BMAT 2022 section 2 full walkthrough to the course, which was the hardest section 2 paper I've ever seen, and there's some really unique solutions that I've put in that walkthrough. Honestly, if you're sitting the BMAT this year, make sure you check out the course. For the first 50 students, the course costs just £30. Whether you're trying to boost your score from a 5 to an 8+, plus, or you're trying to get a general crash course in the BMAT so that you can get the score that you need, this course could be the one thing that makes all the difference. So make sure you check out sigmamed.co.uk. Okay, question number five then. Scientists are using human stem cells to develop treatments for a wide variety of health conditions. Two types of stem cells that are available for this work are stem cells collected from an early embryo, bone marrow stem cells collected from an adult. Which of the following statements are correct? One, both of these types of stem cells can divide producing daughter cells. Each daughter cell will contain only one haploid copy of the donor's genome. That statement is not correct. Two, the stem cells collected from an embryo are able to differentiate into a wider variety of specialized cells than the adult bone marrow stem cell. That's true. The um, stem cells from an embryo have a greater differentiation capacity than ones collected from an adult. Three, the use of stem cell therapy to treat a medical condition can increase the risk of a person developing cancer. That's true, just because stem cells are able to divide so much. So therefore, only statements two and three are correct. One is not correct. So therefore, the correct answer option in this case is going to be answer option G. Okay, question number six then. Hot concentrated aqueous sodium hydroxide and chlorine react together as shown in the equation. Which of the following statements is slash or correct? One. Chlorine has an oxidation state of 5, plus 5 in NaClO3. Yep. Reason being, this is minus 6, this is plus 1, so therefore to balance, chlorine is going to need to be plus 5. 2. This is an example of a disproportionation reaction. Let's see. Chlorine here has a charge of 0, here it has a charge of minus 1, and here it has a charge of plus 5. So therefore it's been both reduced and oxidized and therefore this is a disproportionation reaction and chlorine is undergoing disproportionation. Three, some of the oxygen in the hydroxide ions is oxidized. This is not true. So we can put an X there. So therefore only statements one and two are correct and the correct answer option in this case is E. And just to go back there, the reason that oxygen in the hydroxide ions is not being oxidized is the oxygen is not acting as a reducing agent and the reducing agent is oxidized and the statement is just completely wrong right question number seven then an electric fan heater contains a heating element and a motor that drives the fan the circuit diagram is shown at first the switch is open and the current in the motor is 0 0.4 amps the switch is then closed which of the following statements are correct after the switch is closed? One, the current in the heating element added to the current in the motor is 0 0.4 amps. That's going to be wrong because V is equal to I R. Voltage stays at 240. Resistance is going to go down, so the current's not going to be the same. The total current in the circuit isn't going to be 0 0.4 amps again. Two. The voltage across the heating element is 240 volts. That's correct, because in a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same everywhere. Three, the resistance of the circuit is smaller than it is with the switch open. This is true because of the following rule. 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 dot dot dot. So the overall resistance when you close the switch is going to be lower than when the switch was open because of the extra parallel branch. So therefore, only statements two and three are correct, and the correct answer option in this case is answer option G. Question number eight then. In a sale, the normal price of a camera is reduced by 20%. The sale price of the camera is 180. Which expression gives a normal price of a camera? 
So if we're reducing it by 20%, that means we have 80% left. So what we can say is that 80% of x, which is the original price, is equal to 180. x is therefore equal to 180 divided by 0 0.8. x is equal to 180 divided by 8 over 10. x is equal to well, from the answer options, one of the answer options is just 180 over 0 0.8. So therefore, the correct answer option in this case is D. And again, as I say with the BMAT, trying to work in fractions as much as possible, it makes life a lot easier. Okay, 9. Some rabbits have a genetic condition. The dominant allele codes for this condition. A homozygous dominant rabbit mated with a rabbit that did not have the condition. They had three offspring. One of the offspring then mated with a rabbit that did not have the condition and they also produced three offspring. Two of the offspring had the condition and one did not. One body cell that is in early interphase is taken from each of the rabbits in these three generations. What is the total number of copies of the allele for the condition in this collection of cells? I remember seeing this when I was doing the exam and thinking, oh my god, this is going to take a while. So let's map it out. So homozygous dominant rabbit for the condition, let's call him CC, mate to the rabbit that's healthy, CC. All the kids are going to be heterozygous and they all have the condition. One of these is going to therefore mate with a rabbit that's healthy. So CC, 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 CC. Again, we're pr producing three offspring. Two of them have the condition, two of them, one of them did not. And one body cell that is an early interface is taken from each of these rabbits in these three generations. What is the total number of copies of the allele for the condition and its collection of cells? So the fact that the cells are an early interface basically means that they aren't undergoing mitosis, so they are not doubling up on the chromosomes, basically. So all we need to do from this is just count the number of C alleles. So we have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five. Remember, they only had three children. And we have six and we have seven. This is one of the children, so we're not counting it again. So therefore, overall, we have five up here, two down here, and overall, we have seven. So the correct answer option in this case is D. Hope you guys enjoyed part one of this section two 2020 BMAT for walkthrough. If you guys are new here, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my next walkthroughs and check out sigmamed.co.uk if you're sitting in the BMAT for a BMAT course that costs just £30 for the first 50 students to get it.